Yeah, I mean, it's always been this. This amplifier is loosely based on the uh, original um, Marshall that I used for uh, for most of the recordings in the in the, yeah in the eighties. Um, so it really hasn't changed that much, you know. It's still um, you know very much you know Marshall based, uh, a little bit more controllable, a little bit more hi-fi. Uh, but uh, I've always you know in my head I've always heard the same kind of guitar sound, which is uh, very percussive, uh, very well defined, and with a lot of dynamics, you know, to me when you, and that usually comes from driving the output stage of the amplifier. That's where you get a lot of your natural compression and things, because uh, I'm always looking for very sharp, defined edges in my guitar sound. That's always been my thing. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, um, you know, you hear it up here first, and then you go to the ends of the earth to find how to create the sound that you hear in your head. Um, but obviously, it has to be harmonically rich and 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 uh, able to um, play uh, chords clearly that uh, uh, maybe some other amplifiers that I've tried in the past don't always convey that. You know, they they don't carry the kind of harmonic content that, for me, an amp like, like this does. I'm very much a, you know, a guitar player based in, in 70s guitar, guitar players. Though, that, you know, although I made my career in the 80s, all of my training and all of my influences came from the 70s and some from the 60s. But uh, you know, the, the, you know, I got my first electric guitar when I was 13, and that was you know, around the time of like Led Zeppelin IV. And uh, a lot of Steve Howe from Yes was a huge influence on me, although I don't have a, a style like his, but he was a guitar player that played so many different styles, from classical to jazz to, uh, you know, psychedelic or everything. But, but what I loved about Steve is you could tell every note he played. He did it by not having distortion. And to me, I always strove for a, a guitar sound that has distortion but still very well defined. So if I... <laughs> People wouldn't, you know, it, it wouldn't think of Steve Howe or something like that, but, but I'm always hearing these kind of very well-defined things, and, um, you know, obviously with chords. <laughs> things that would sound great on an acoustic guitar and for me if I don't have a, an amplifier that can also come translate that um, it's a problem for me but um, but also you know I go for like very uh, classic things uh, Hendrix or you know still even though I'm a I'm a uh, single cutaway style guitar player I um, look for you know <laughs> can, you know, pretty much go from the, you know, Billy Idol thing to, to that kind of classic, it's a bit of, bit of Led Zeppelin meets punk rock really, you know, um, but I can easily go with the use of, you know, a bit of delay and a vibe pedal to something that sounds like, 
you know, Jimi Hendrix or Robin Trower or something. It's just how you hear them in your head, I think, you know. I don't use reverb live because you're in a, you're in a hall anyway. And I filled my quota for chorus pedals in the, in, the, in the 80s. So it's something I don't really, I hear chorus guitar now and I kind of go, been there, done that, you know. Uh, obviously during the, the, if I'm playing a Billy Idol show for things like Flesh for Fantasy, I'll have chorusing and things, but for this, this show I don't require it.